But I can honestly say God was never real to me. And my family, going back three generations, were atheists. Yeah, I was born in a Sikh family. I come from a Punjabi, North Indian Hindu family. We would go to the temple learning Buddhism. Even from very young age, from my childhood, I always wanted to know God. Being raised Buddhist, I sought answers through Buddhism. There is no God out there. And if there is one, it's up to him to prove himself to me. I'm not going in search of anyone. But I did feel this sense of something missing until I started studying science. At that point, I felt that what I had been missing was something like that. And, and it kind of filled that gap. I always felt like there was a part of me uh, which wanted to know God. I would look up into sky and I would, I would just talk to God. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know the truth about him. I would just talk to him sometimes for an hour in my own language, Farsi. And I was asking him to show me the truth. And I was asking him to communicate with me and talk to me. So I had this life that looked good on the outside, but in the inside, I was sleeping in, I was depressed, I was racist, I was angry. Depression sets in, confusion sets in. I read like the whole Sikh uh, holy book, but it didn't satisfy me. I was like, no, this, is, this word is something else. It's not the word that I'm reading. Uh, it doesn't satisfy my heart. But I screamed. I said it like eight times screaming and my soul told me you're wrong it's not true you are going to hell for eternity and let me tell you something guys I cannot even explain it in words the feeling of what hopelessness is it doesn't compare to the hopelessness you feel in this world you feel it a million times worse and I was so tired of following Islamic rules or religious rules, I realized that none of them could really help me. I did agree to go to the church with a friend of mine who was a Catholic. My little sister won't stop bugging me. Isaiah, you got to go to church. You got to go to church. Just try God one time. And one day, my sister came home. She had a little booklet in her hand. Uh, the name on that booklet was, His Name is Wonderful. And she just gave that little booklet to me. It was, I think, maybe 20, 30 pages. And she said, you know, this is about Christianity. After every gym session, we would talk about religion and God and, you know, spirituality and everything. And I was like trying to bring him into Sikhism. He just gave me a Bible. He said, hey, man, you know, you read your uh, scripture and why don't you try reading this? This time I, I really listened. I paid attention because I knew that the way she was sharing it, the way she approached it, that she was sincere, that she really thought that this Jesus is someone I needed. Things in, in biochemistry that certainly made very little sense to me from a purely scientific background. Things like the very complicated biochemical systems that had to be present at the very beginning of life. I remember from the first page, from the first word, God was speaking to my heart. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, you know? So that line, after I finished that word, that was it for me. Uh, I, I just couldn't stop crying. I don't know, I probably cried for an hour or something. God, I don't often believe in you, because I really didn't believe in you. I said, but if you're real, I'll give you everything. And I said out loud, I believe. Here I am, face to face, Contrary to logic, contrary to intellect, I am face to face with an irrefutable real presence of this Bible character called Jesus Christ. He's my father, my brother, my everything, because he is the only way. You know, when I got to the last page of that booklet, I had no doubt that Jesus is God. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. No, just put your trust in Christ. Like, it's not going to disappoint you.